All right, folks, welcome back. So today I want to take a look at a paper by Ocon and Hannenberg from the University of Duisburg Essen in Germany. And while the paper has a somewhat complicated title, the central question it is trying to ask is, can we build a rigged experiment between dynamic and static languages? that we think will benefit the dynamic language. There have been a lot of studies that show the benefits of statically typed languages over dynamically typed languages. This is quite well established by now. All the same dynamic languages like Ruby, Python, and JavaScript are still very, very popular. So what the authors are trying to do in this paper is come up with programming tasks that are intentionally chosen thinking that it would be faster to solve them in a dynamic language than in a statically typed language. So how do you even find programming tasks that are tilted in favor of dynamic languages? That was not an easy task in itself. The authors essentially went out to the programming community on Reddit and Stack Overflow and asked programmers what such tasks could be. And after collating a lot of answers, they ended up with four tasks. The first one was to flatten a nested linked list. The task description looks somewhat like this, where if you have a linked list where some of its elements themselves might be lists, the output needs to be a flat linked list containing all the elements within those nested lists. The second task was to write a method that takes a list of galleries and extracts the objects within them. In both these tasks, the task itself is algorithmically quite simple. But if you want to express these types in a language like Java, which has generic types for lists, it can be somewhat non-trivial to formulate the correct return types of these methods. This is where it is surmised that a dynamically typed language might win out because all these complex generic type descriptions are omitted. The third task was to replace a class. We want to replace all occurrences of an old type with a new type, but in the dynamically typed language, you don't even need to do this because the types are not checked. To make it meaningful, they introduced some new small changes in the new class. And this introduced about 46 compile errors that needed to be fixed in the static version of the code and four changes in the dynamically typed version of the code. And the fourth and last task was to implement an interface. The interface was pretty big. It had 26 methods in it, but only five were actually required by the rest of the code. But the developer did not know upfront what those five methods were. This means that to solve this in a statically typed language, you would have to implement all 26 methods. Whereas in a dynamically typed language, you could only implement the methods that you thought were required. And if you happened to call a method that you had not implemented, you would get a runtime, no such method exception. They performed this experiment with 21 undergraduate students from the university, and they used Java as the statically typed language and Groovy as the dynamically typed language. And the results were somewhat surprising. On the first task, we see that it is almost twice as fast to solve the problem in Groovy, a dynamically typed language the authors get a similar result for the second task as well. Remember that the first two tasks dealt with nested lists requiring complex generic type descriptions. 
But then when we look at the third and fourth tasks, the situation is reversed. Both for task three and task four, we find that the subjects took longer to solve it in Groovy than in Java. This is a pretty surprising result. We started out trying to explicitly pick programming tasks that would be faster in dynamically typed languages. And even then, we failed to see that effect in half of the tasks. This reinforces a lot of earlier studies that showed the usability benefits of statically typed languages. If we look specifically at the two tasks that dealt with nested lists, those were the tasks where the dynamic language came out ahead. And they both had to do with using generic types in Java. This hints towards generic types being somewhat special in how complex they are and perhaps how difficult they may be to understand. But let's turn to the two tasks where the dynamically typed languages took more development time. What happened over there? These were both tasks where the static system identified all the places where changes needed to be made at compile time. Whereas in the dynamically typed situation, you were forced to handle them when a runtime exception was noticed. So that was a quick look at a paper that set up a rigged experiment to see if dynamic languages would come out ahead, and even then they didn't. So that's a pretty surprising result. Of course, the debate of static versus dynamic typing is not going to be settled by this, even though the evidence is pretty strong. We need a lot more experimentation to really understand why is it that in domains like machine learning and data science and bioinformatics, dynamic languages like Python have such a dominating market share. I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you very much.